we have a property up in Boston um, that is a management um, that we do out of that. It's a partnership, sorry. And then our property that we have in Pittsburgh is a um uh we have it's the arbitrage so yeah we have a lease on that yeah between the two of them net is we did well for just this last year just over twenty six thousand dollars the pittsburgh's only been going about nine months and the one in boston's been a year actually well, well actually just after we got pittsburgh up and going we had our last kid that we had the fourth, child, fourth yeah. child and we decided it's like <laughs> We just need to take a break, let things that just, you know, run, run the course of things, you know, until he got a little bit older. And we, we've got some plans for the future here coming up very soon, but we kind of get things back into gear because we've definitely gotten a little complacent, you could say. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're definitely going to be hopping back on the train for, for the next six to seven months, hopefully with a goal to, to get out of work within that time frame. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to the channel. Got a great episode ahead for you today. We love bringing testimonials, people that have found our resources online, just like you're watching right now, and have actually taken advantage of and had made that action item step to move forward with it. We talk about short-term rentals. The STR is about the biggest buzz, uh, really, in, in the real estate investment asset class right now that we're hearing about. So we continue to feature short-term rentals here on the channel. We've got an active strategy that we're super fond of that we continue to bring here on the channel because time and time again, we're getting tremendous feedback from our uh, viewers. We're getting tremendous results. And that's going to be the B&B Boot Camp. We'll go ahead and drop a playlist. They've been on the channel here for a number of years for the reasons I just stated. Now, this is an active strategy. This is for folks that want to get involved in short-term rentals. There's a couple ways that they can get involved without having to utilize their own cash. There's ways they can get involved as far as using OPM or other people's money, which we often advocate for here on this channel. Uh, but with that being said, we're going to welcome back my Michael and Katrina with BNB Bootcamp. Michael and Katrina, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. Thanks every for time. Us. Yeah, great to see you. Guys, one of the things that we love about the BNB Boot Camp is how transparent they are. We're going to have a video coming up here with them shortly where they're really in 2023 going to pull back the curtain. Guys, like we've never seen them show before on this channel. Another thing that we love to do with them is bring on living, breathing testimonials. Folks just like you that are watching right now that either are being introduced to this concept and this uh, investment strategy for the first time or have been doing some research and have come across it at some point. These folks actually saw the video here on VIP is my understanding. They took action. Uh, they're here on the channel today. We love to hear from the horse's mouth, if you will, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Welcome, Nathan and Hannah Powell. Hey, guys. Good to be here. Guys, we know that you've uh, you've got four young ones at home, and Hannah, we understand that you're going to be in and out. We chatted offline before we started the video today, uh, so kind of come and go, you know, whatever's necessary there based on uh, on demand there in the background, of course. But guys, appreciate you being here. Uh, if you don't mind just giving, you know, who you are, where you live in the country. Um, do you have real estate experience? Are you W-2? And you know, maybe what your goals were before you found BNB Boot Camp. Okay. Yeah, so my name is Nathan Powell. I'm my wife, Hannah, and we live in the western part of Pennsylvania. We're about two hours from Pittsburgh, a little town called Davidsville. And I am a truck driver by profession. I've been doing that for almost, it'll be 12 years here in about six months. Um, and I, I guess, as they call it, lots of window time. I've had lots of time to think while I drive over the hundreds of miles, thousands of miles that I've driven. And kind of slowly as life was going by, I was realizing that this is not something I really wanted to do for the rest of my life. You come home because of the work schedule hours and everything. You come home, you're tired. You know, I don't really want to do a whole lot with the kids at that point because I'm tired. And then you go to bed, you work up, you start all over. Just, just kind of like a, that nine to five thing, just wasn't settling well with me just watching again like I said the time go by and so I started looking into different things um initially all everything I listened to while I was driving was just different entertaining stuff and eventually that just kind of led into like financial education stuff which is where I found your guys's channel um and then that proceeded to get into more like okay what I could do as side hustles and I tried a couple different things and found out really quickly that sales not a thing. I, I okay. <laughs> sales just don't work. Now you do have to have a bit of this and and what we do with this with pitching landlords and everything. Um, but uh, it the the short term rental management I, we've had no prior experience with with real estate or or um or short term rentals themselves. Um, but it just all around seems something like we could definitely do. Um, the barrier to entry um seemed reasonable. Um, for not really having much money saved up. 
And uh, when the opportunity came up, like I'd heard of Michael Contrino while I followed your guys' channel for, for months. And I was like, man, I need to do it. And I was like, I knew they had limited slots and everything. And one time they came on and I heard they were only taking 10 people. Like I literally pulled the truck over off the side of the road. And I'm like writing out an email. It's like, okay, I got to get in this one. So we just kind of like just dropped and did it. So yeah, kind of we got into this, but yeah. Okay, so you said you'd, you'd done research for a couple months before you pulled the trigger. Um, what resonated with Michael and Katrina and y'all that made you decide that they were the right fit for you? Uh, well, when it comes to a lot of other people, um, some of the other things I looked into, you, you just get that really salesy vibe. Um, I obviously didn't really get that from Michael and Katrina, but I would say the big thing that really stood out to me, like just really stood out, is that they showed you their net. Mm. I, I've never found anyone else that shows you their actual net. Everyone, oh, we made a million dollars. That's great. What you take home? Right. And that, you know, and I know that's something you guys talk about on the channel a lot. And the fact that he displayed their net, actual true numbers, it wasn't like mm -hmm. what all, you know, their whole gross and everything. That was probably the biggest point to me that was like, okay, well, I mean, if that's what they're showing, that's clearly what they're making. He's actually on his computer showing us. I was like, well, that, that to me was pretty much a sealed deal at that point. Yeah, and I can't really, really overstate that enough how important that is because guys just being in the business and there's a million YouTubers out there and the influencers. Well, the reality is when you when you really lift up the hood and and are in the know, these people, a lot of them have done a handful of deals and all of a sudden they're the bona fide expert that gets to go out there and claim to be the expert or they you know commission someone to write a book that costs them a couple hundred bucks and they've done two or three deals themselves. You can get in a lot of trouble real fast, and I'm talking about losing money type of trouble. I'm not talking about necessarily legal issues, but um, you know, I've, I've time and time again, I've come across people that have pumped money into you know numerous coaching sessions and have gotten little to nothing out of it. So, you know, when we come, came across them and we started to get this feedback, obviously we knew we had found the winner, and obviously you guys did too. So, do you re do you regret pulling the truck over that day? I guess would be my follow up question. <laughs> no. No, um, and this may sound salesy. I don't know how else to say it though, but we wouldn't be where we are at right now if it weren't for them. Um, I, I'll be honest with you, like I can work hard physically when it comes to computer stuff. I tend to be on the lazier side. So mm -hmm. having that accountability, having that step-by-step -step of what to do, it's, it's so easy when you hit that brick wall of what you don't know what to do and you just stop or you're overwhelmed and so you just stop versus just having them there guiding you through it. You know, they're on those... Uh, the monthly calls for the B and B program. It was just you know huge for us to have that. So yeah, just ha just having that support system to lean on. You know, we always talk about and, and advocate for having a mentorship or a coaching. Uh, you know, in your life or multiples. I do personally myself and have for years. I know Matthew does as well, and and those are super valuable relationships. And obviously, you guys are bearing the fruit of that. So guys, if you're watching, you're on the fence. You have done research like um, Nathan and Hannah have. You know, before they pulled the trigger, you know you're interested right now, or you at least want some uh, more information from Michael and Katrina. There are limited spots. That is not a ploy, guys. They give hands-on attention, and they do cap it at ten. These guys, uh, you heard it straight from the horse's mouth here. So. If you know you want more information or you're ready to pull the trigger right now and really change your life in 2023 financially, go ahead and email bnb at vipfinancialeducation.com. That's bnb at vipfinancialeducation.com. Be sure to include your first, your last name in the body of the email and bnb conversation in the subject line. Someone from Michael and Katrina's team will get back in touch with you ASAP to see if you're a good fit. Some of you will not be, some of you will. Let's get down to the nitty gritty here, guys. So let's talk some numbers. How long have you been doing this? When did you start their class? And are you still enrolled in it right now? Or have you gone through the entire program? Yeah, so we started back in August 2022. Um, and we went through the program, which is almost six months. Um, and then, or was that almost a year, less than a year, like six months later, I guess, they, they were offered a, another program to be, um, I guess, the next level up, um, which we no, no question. Join that as well, because like we just we need that accountability. If 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 only that. Um, but other than that, it's been it's been fabulous too. But um, yeah. So that's when we started. Um, so a year and a half ago at this point, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. And in that eighteen months, how many houses have you put under uh, under contract? Two. <laughs> or, or 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 how many doors? Because you guys may have some multi units as well. Yeah, just just two properties at this point. Okay. Okay. Yep. 
two properties and are these apartments, houses, and what kind of deals are they now? Uh, obviously part of their coaching program is um, you know, multiple approaches, one being the partnership model, one being the arbitrage model. And then of course, you know, there's nothing wrong with going out there and buying and owning your own home and doing the self-management, which is part of their program as well. Where do you guys fall into those categories between those two properties? Okay, so we have we have both options on that. We have a property up in Boston um, that is a management um, that we do out of that. It's a partnership, sorry. And then our property that we have in Pittsburgh is a um, uh, we have, it's the arbitrage. So yeah, we have a lease on that. Um, but yeah. Okay, and between the two, do you mind sharing what you net? Monthly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Between the two of them, net is we did well for just this last year, just over twenty six thousand dollars. Twenty six thousand dollars net in the past. You said in the past twelve months. Yeah. For the, well, yeah, from the year because it took us like from when we started the program. It was at the very end of the program we actually got one going, and then the other a couple months later. So the one's only been running for about the Pittsburgh's only been going about nine months, and the one in Boston's been a year actually, pretty much. Okay, and so that's within for the first year. Obviously, there's a cost associated with uh, the B and B boot camp, of course. But I know what that expense is, and you guys have certainly exceeded it uh, multiple times at this point in year number one. And now you have these houses locked up for uh, for a longer term, it sounds like? Yeah, for the foregoing future, for sure, yeah. Okay, so at least in the foreseeable future, you guys have a $26,000 net income. Um, just based off of your experience and your knowledge now, do you feel like you have the tools having gone through that to just go ahead and what we call rinse and repeat and replicate that and ultimately scale that up? Yeah, no, absolutely. Part, I mean, part of our delay too is we just, well, actually, just after we got Pittsburgh up and going, we had our last kid that we had, oh, yeah. the fourth child, and we decided it was like, we just need to take a break, let things just, you know, run, run the course of things, you know, until he got a little bit older. And we, we've got some plans for the future here coming up very soon, but we kind of get things back into gear because we definitely got a little complacent, you could say. Um, yeah. But yeah, we're definitely going to be hopping back on the train for for the next six to seven months, hopefully with a goal to to get out of work within that time frame. But yeah, sure. both properties are for this foreseeable future. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's obviously understandable. You bring a new one into the family, you're going to have your hands full there. But the cool thing about that is obviously the the. The heavy lifting is done in getting these, in finding the houses, getting them under contract, getting them set up front. Uh, we've talked about that before with Michael and Katrina. But once you have that set up, obviously there's some ongoing maintenance, if you will, where you're spending a little bit of uh, time on it each day. But I wouldn't call it obviously not passive at that point, but quasi active. And so you guys are bringing a new one to the family and you're making that money on the side in addition to, the, to, to your W 2s. So uh, without really skipping a beat, now you guys have gone through that. You're, um, back to kind of normal, if you will, and now you're gonna grow your business again, and you're not having to start all over. You've already got those two properties in your portfolio, and now it's just building on top of that. So you mentioned that one's in Boston and one's in Pittsburgh, and you're about two hours outside of Pittsburgh. So how did you, from a geographic standpoint, how did you, how, how the heck did you pick those? And guys, it just goes to show you that you don't have to be in the exact area to manage these properties. So how did you find those uh, out of your curiosity and, and how do you guys manage remotely like that? Yeah, uh, yeah, I would say both properties are definitely remote just from the fact of, you know, we usually don't do anything unless we're together pretty much when it comes to going to them. So that means taking the whole family with us. So it's it's a move every time we go to, to one of the properties. Um, our place in Pittsburgh, I think we found that first. Yeah, um, we found that obviously we just had, I don't know, it was probably... I want to say maybe my 10th call somewhere in there when we locked that in as far as like for how many properties that I called and um, pretty much just came across it by searching through you know what they teach us on how to search properties. And once you, you, know, you find these properties, you kind of do a little bit of research on what you think it has the capability of doing. Um, and that just happened to be a, a phone call that landed. So we're really happy for that. And the landlords are interested in doing other properties too. And so at some point in the future too. So that's, that's cool. Uh, the yeah. property in Pittsburgh or sorry, in Boston is a bit different. Um, they say, don't do business with family. However, in this situation, we went ahead and pulled the trigger anyway. It's a really unique situation. I don't know how much in depth I need to go over it, but basically I had a brother-in-law moving up to Boston area that um, was going to dental school. 
had another brother-in-law down in Tennessee who has a bunch of properties and he bought this property for him to live in, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he wants him as a dentist as part of it. But anyway, he bought it for, for him to live in um, just, just, just out of the kindness of his heart to really reduce their living costs, which is huge. Well, he bought a duplex, obviously, for the one side to help pay for rent. Um, and as it was, um, he wasn't going to be na- making nearly a muff out of the one unit just to cover um, the, the mortgage, basically. So this right. is about the time he'd gotten the property. A couple months later, we started the program. And we thought, well, wouldn't it be a cool opportunity to just kind of return the blessing in a way? Um, you know, and obviously it just works out great as a business opportunity. But mm-hmm. to come to him in, in a scenario where he was going to be at a net loss of this property and pose the idea that, hey, we could run this as a short-term rental for you. Mm-hmm. And it took a little convincing because he was definitely more on the traditional side. Um, but eventually he pulled the trigger for it. Um, he even funded a good bit of the furnishing up front, which was huge. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, it's blowing our blowing us out of the water as far as how how well the properties performed. So that's awesome. And yeah, obviously there's that old adage, don't do business with family. I have done a lot of business with family. It's been good, bad, and, and ugly and everything in between, but uh, it's like touching that hot stove. I, I still don't learn. Um, but that's that's that, that's phenomenal that you guys have had that experience there. Um, and, and you solved the problem, right? So it's like a, the amazing thing about this model is it's a win, win, win. You know, you're, you're not, everyone's kind of getting their pound of flesh, if you will. And that's what we like about models like this, uh, where everyone kind of walks away the winner, if you will. So I'm going to tag Michael and Katrina in here real fast. They've been waiting patiently in the background. Um, I, I would like to ask you guys, so obviously we're talking to a success story here and, and the sky's the limit. They've got the foundation, their positive cash flow, you know, a couple thousand dollars every month. Um, why were they successful? You guys see a lot of students come through, Michael and Katrina, you know, what in your mind stood out to you about um, these folks that, you know, ultimately translated into success, whereas maybe in some other folks, you don't see the same thing. Um, can you speak on that or, you know, was it just hard work and determination and they were going to get there either way? Yeah, it's a fantastic question. Did you yeah, know? I think we both kind of have, um, well, just we're kind of yin and yang when yeah. anyone coming in and we, we see something in everyone. Like as being a coach, like we always hold you up to that standard that you can do it. But I mean, Nathan already kind of hit the nail on the head saying that accountability component Mm -hmm. I mean there's a lot of courses out there a lot of um, quote-unquote gurus a lot of like YouTube there's so many videos but the biggest thing is is coaching takes you to a different level because it holds you accountable and I think that was the Mm -hmm. biggest thing I I remember when we first had that conversation with Nathan and Hannah was saying hey you know what I need that accountability and like hold my feet to the fire I remember that first Mm -hmm. conversation about that it's like this is for us and we're like we will be there. You know, we say like, we're not here to be your friend. We're here to be your mentors. And of course we're friendly with you. And we're, of course you guys yeah. are yeah. It's definitely gone above yeah. and beyond in that. But the biggest thing is, is you guys showed up. Mm-hmm. You guys showed up for every call because we were there and you were there. And that was the biggest thing is you guys were committed and you showed up. So that's what I saw. The second, well, to add on to that point, uh, Nathan had brought it up a little bit earlier on this call about, um, overcoming fear, right? Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people that might be listening to different YouTube shows and financial education, all these different things, they know what they need to do, but then they just never do it. So then, you know, the year rolls by. Here we are now at the time we're recording. This is January, 2023. For a lot of people by January, 2024, it's going to be the same old story, right? Unless you decide to do something different. It's not new year, new you. It's new year, new actions yeah Mm -hmm. and I think a big thing with uh, Nathan and Hannah I know Nathan he was very scared to have these conversations I want I should say scared like you had that I guess that I was was a nervous disaster I I got off my first phone call shaking Uh, and it's just just one of those things with sales even though I know I'm bringing an amazing idea to you know to a landlord I would just just it's gotten better. <laughs> yeah, we, we call that the 900 pound phone. Yeah, it's 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 real real heavy at first. Um, and let's let's actually touch on that. So you mentioned earlier, and now we're we're back in that same vein. You said you're you, you don't consider yourself a salesman. Um, and, th- and now they're talking about you had that kind of block and that trepidation to pick up the phone out of the gate. Um, 
how'd you overcome that? Obviously, they gave you the tools. It's there's some scripts that are involved, and that's obviously uh, huge. You know, you're going in confidently because you know what you're saying to them is tried and true. You're not shooting from the hip and winging it. So you know the information that you're giving them is valuable. Uh, but you know the shaky voice and the, you know the stuttering and all the things that you have nightmares about. Um, you set out set out of the gate. That was you know you encounter those things. How the heck did you overcome them? Obviously, you did. And I think there's an element of sales in everything. I don't care what industry you're in. Yeah, no, I, that's 100% true. It just it just came down to having to do it. In fact, at one point, uh, we we're clearly dragging our feet on making the phone calls, and he, you know, he just kind of was like, "Well, are you teachable?" And <laughs> he pretty much just took me through this, like. You just, you just have to set a time out of your calendar and just make yourself make those calls and just came down to, you just have to do it, you know, as, as tough as it was and you stutter through it. And the problem for me, you know, obviously they, they, they give lots of really good points on what to bring up to landlords, you know, basically like a script and everything. Now you can't memorize it, obviously, because you sound like a robot, but mm -hmm. at least having those in the back of my head was a huge help, massive help. Um, and just just came down to to the right the right the right fit the right landlord is really what it came down to just making enough phone calls and you find the right person yeah absolutely please Anna, go ahead i think it also they brought up one point during that time that we we're saying you know if it's a no that's okay that's just one of the many no's until you get a yes like if you have a percentage you're going to get you know 10 no's and one will be a yes and so mm -hmm. i think once you get that mindset where you stop freaking out about this person said no was it something i said was i too salesy mm -hmm. was the, you know that fear and trepidation where you just start to be like all right that's fine that was yeah. the first no and then you just start counting them off till you get that one that says yes and you're like it just builds more confidence in you i think yeah i i love well i love that mindset you know really just you're getting through all the no's to reach the yeses. I, I certainly subscribe to that myself. Um, so you've mentioned earlier, it took you 10 phone calls to get your first deal. All you gotta do is, you know, with that same math, make 100 phone calls to get 10 deals conceivably. So um, what are your goals for 2023? So you guys are, are talking about hitting the ground running. Life is kind of back to normal. You've got the fourth kid settled into the family now. Uh, what, what are the goals for 2023? Sky's the limit. Yep. So we've got, we've pretty much given ourselves like to the end of January to really get a lot of like some of the stuff we've been missing on the back end of really, really getting our uh, accounting up to really up to par, a lot of it automated, making things a lot simpler, um, getting on the right platforms, getting on multiple platforms, I should say, um, just kind of getting that all done. Cause we've been working on it, chipping at the edges, but not just, just, just making big, pretty much giving ourselves a deadline where we have to have it done. And then with the goal, and, and we actually have this worked out with our with our calendar schedule and everything, like a week by like several things that we need to do accomplish each week to get to that point. Um, and then beyond that too, then for the properties, we're it's our goal to get a cop up from one property per month for the next six months leading on to that, being that we've got a little bit more experience now, because we said that in the beginning too, and that <laughs> clearly didn't happen, but it's okay. You know, you know, again, with family, a lot of times it's one of the biggest struggles we had actually just, you know, with the kids taking them, or just, mm. it was just so much to do. Um, mm. But that's, that's pretty much our, our goals moving forward is to just like, you know, within the next month, finish up all the, the internal side of things basically. And then after that, hitting, hitting a property every month. Yeah, I, I love that. And I think I think that sounds super attainable. Um, also, you guys are obviously going to get better at your craft, but ultimately mass is going to start attracting mass as well. You're going to start getting, a, you know, a referral network from, you know, even your family member, you know, that says, hey, you know, this is what's working for me right now. I'm doing the same thing. You've got references that's going to make it easier for, you know, additional future prospects to trust you because they're going to be talking to people that are in your system already. So, you know, the, the the wheels do get greased, you know, as you go. There's something cathartic about, you know, of course, popping that first deal, but it does get easier over time. And obviously you guys are gonna be a testament to that. So guys, if you're watching, you're on the fence, you've been thinking about getting involved in short-term rentals and the DIY capacity, uh, b, b Bootcamp it could be a great fit for you. Go ahead and email bnb at vipfinancialeducation.com. That's bnb at vipfinancialeducation.com. We'll drop a link to that email below. We'll drop a link to the playlist 
exist previously. Uh, so you can go back and review additional information, additional testimonials like we've got on here today. Um, include your first, your last name, and the body of the email. Uh, and of course, the best number to reach at and b and uh, conversation in the subject line. And someone from Michael and Katrina's team will get back in touch with you ASAP. Um, so if you want to be a testimonial like Nathan and Hannah, uh, this might be a great fit for you. Guys, uh, just kind of parting shot if you had it to do all over again, it sounds like you would. If someone's in your shoes right now and they're watching this video, what would you tell them? You know, if they're on the fence, you know, would this possibly be a good fit? You know, is it possibly not? What would you say to those folks that might be a tip me over? Um, but conversely, what might you say to those folks that are on the fence that this may not be a good fit for just based on your experience so far? Yeah, um, you, you definitely gonna have to have a work ethic um, that hands down as far I have zero, like zero computer skills. I consider myself slightly better than my mom who had to ask how to get on the computer to, to access email. I consider myself a little better than that. So really bad. Um, but you know, you, you just work through stuff. So you definitely have, have a bit of a work ethic, you know, as I mentioned with us, just with the kids, you know, my, my job, we actually homeschool our kids too. So on top of that, so it's just, it's, it's a lot. Um, so having a good work ethic is, is probably one of the biggest things you're going to need and being teachable, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you can sit there and listen and, you know, obviously you're going to want to try things your own way to some extent, but um, just being able to, if, if you, if you follow through their steps, like we did, I mean, you're, you're it's going to work. It should work. <laughs> I don't know why it wouldn't. So. Yeah, sure. So you're saying if, without a work ethic, obviously, it's going to be all for not going through the boot camp. What else? Any other reasons why someone might want to eliminate themselves? Ah, uh, I don't I not necessarily. I can't do that. <laughs> I'm trying to get you to say something bad about these folks. You know what I mean? Like if um, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, oh, they've never left us short. Not really. I mean, they felt that they've led us purposely, I think be t like figure it out on your own because you know if you don't if you're taught everything you don't have mm -hmm. that real incorporation into your business some of those things you actually have to like figure out for yourself like you know they're going to tell you not going to like hold your hand and be like oh these are those city regulations and this and that they're like these are the models you have to go on and look up the city regulations see where you you know where your business fits and mm -hmm. Some of that stuff can really like hinder you. You're like, oh, I don't know if I don't know, you know, like our one property in Pittsburgh has no regulations. And we're like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? And then we're like, does that mean we missed the regulations or, but it's, it was right. a good thing because it really kind of taught us the hands-on experience of like, yeah. this is our business. And now we really have done it and you're going to be able to repeat it and not just like them holding your hand and being like doing it for you and be like, well, here, these are what we mean. It's, it's a really good program. It's, I mean, the, those things you just have to be taught on your own. Like they're not going to make those phone calls for you either. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The, and, and, the, and the phone doesn't dial itself either. Um, guys, well, certainly appreciate you coming here on the channel, uh, given the feedback, the good, the bad, and there really is, hasn't been any ugly. You guys have uh, been a testament that if you follow the program, you work the scripts, uh, you rinse and repeat, you put the time in and you show up um, and, and allow yourself to be held accountable. You can be successful. You guys have great goals for this year. Uh, if you don't mind, we might check back in with you here in a couple months and see how your progress is. See if you guys are sticking to those goals. Uh, and guys, email bnb at vipfinancialeducation.com uh, if you want additional information. I know that there are limited slots. They typically hold it to 10 a month. Uh, so act fast. They do fill up very quickly and then you would have to hold off until the next month. So um, guys, you're doing this as a side hustle now. It sounds like you've got plans to turn this into the main hustle in the near future. We certainly wish you guys the best of luck. Guys, thanks for joining us here on the video. Smash that thumbs up button below if you want more BNB boot camp and specifically if you want more testimonials until next time keep on cash flowing make it a great day and take care